Praise the Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. Yes, it is. So, good morning. So I read something. Um, Joseph Prince has a new book out, and it's called Let It Go Living, which is kind of Michael and I's theme this year is Let It Go. And um, the premise of the book, which really struck me, is that when a thought comes that we don't want to come, you can't just will it away. You have to replace it with the new thought. And I thought, wow, that's really powerful because thoughts come all the time. And, you know, and I thought about the tree, right, the fruit, the fruit, the two trees in the garden. And those thoughts are like food to us. We chew on them. And are we choosing the right food? Right? Are we choosing the right thoughts to chew on? Because thoughts come and go. Yeah. And we have to have the discipline to cast one aside. Yes. Literally cast it aside and pick and turn to the other tree and eat the good food, right? Which is the word of God. Right. And so I was reminded of the scripture from Philippians um, chapter 4, which I think actually Pastor read on Wednesday. Uh, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And I've talked about thanksgiving so many times, but when we have a grateful heart, those thoughts don't come as easily, do they? When we're thankful for what we have and don't think on the things that we don't, our heart is filled with love and gratitude. And those thoughts just don't come as often. Um, That's the peace of God, right? That's that peace of God that keeps us, that passes all understanding. Uh, And it's the peace of God that keeps our hearts and our minds, right? It's that peace that protects our mind even from those thoughts coming. And finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. So I think that... It's almost like being prepared, right? Mm-hmm. Having having those scriptures around us in our homes on the sticky notes or in lipstick yes. on the mirror, however we do that, surround yes. ourselves. Um, Sarah gave me some beautiful things to put in my office, and I, um, so I'm surrounded by the Word of God in my office now. Yes. <laughs> Think on these things. Yes. Think on these things. Right. The Word of God is pure. Jesus Christ is pure. Right. And in those moments where we just don't have any scripture to think on, mm. I turn to the name of Jesus. Yep. And once I say his name, yep. yeah. he comes. Yes. Every time. Just saying the name of Jesus when I'm afraid or yep. or when, I, when I'm worrying. Oh, worry is sneaky, right? Because it feels like you're trying right. to protect and prepare. It's not. Right. It's not trusting the Lord. Right. And it's putting us in a place of fear, a position of fear instead of a position of being thankful. <laughs> and just to know that when we call on the name of Jesus, he is there, right? right? So I encourage you to think on these things, to think on the Word of God, to think on Jesus Christ, and live a life of let it go living. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. name. Any prayer requests or testimonies? Yeah, for real. So a few things. Uh, Update on my family. They're doing well. They got power back about two and a half weeks ago. Situation is good. They have water. Everything's well. Uh, they got their internet back the other day, mm-hmm. so now they're like pretty much back to normal. Uh, they still don't know about what, what's going to happen with my sisters, but it looks like uh, they're not going to get laid off for the rest of the year. So that's a good thing. Uh, my dad is going to go there on next Sunday on the fourth. He's going to fly out, and then he's taking some stuff uh, to them, but he was having a hard time taking the power generator because, I mean, everything's still unstable, so we don't know if they're going to lose power or not, but uh, so he had to ship it via UPS, and it was going to be about $500 to ship that. Uh, So I was able to give him the money for that and help him out, so I'm grateful that uh, God provided for that situation. 
Another thing is I would like prayer for my brother. My brother has this thorn in his heart that he cannot let go of. And, and it has to do with my dad. Uh, if you talk to him about our dad, he gets mad and he's like, don't talk to me about him and all this other stuff and whatnot. And a few weeks ago we had a conversation and I called him out on it because he started complaining. I said, if you told him not to contact you ever again, why are you mad that he doesn't call you? He's doing what he told him, you know? Uh, so just to let go of that anger and hatred he has in his heart, because it's not good. I mean, many years ago when I was probably starting college, I was like 18, maybe 19, uh, I had this uh, actual hatred towards my dad. And one day uh, I felt God speak to me, and this is before I even accepted Jesus as my Savior, and, and, and said, You gotta let go. And I did. And ever since then, my life got transformed towards my relationship with Him. And there's still some rough spots there, but for the most part, the sandpaper did its work. Uh, and it's all good. And then the, the last thing, I went to the doctor for a yearly checkup uh, earlier this week and then she referred me to a cardiologist and I went and the guy told me that he said that I have diabetes. Uh, I know that's not true, that's just the world and yes. the enemy yes. trying to break me down. Uh, now you got this that supposedly is for life and yeah. it's going to take control of you. Yeah. I know that's not true. Uh, so I know that I'm healed because the Lord said it. And uh, it's been spoken to us and it's embedded in the tablet of our hearts that His word is true. And if He says we're healed, we are healed. I know that I have to make some changes so that this body doesn't break down. But me, I do not have that. Because that's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Um, I hope I have enough time to, to say all this. So, um, always love coming to Eastern Gate House of Prayer because the Lord always gives me a word, it seems like. And a year or two ago, the Lord told me I had some wholesome in me that He was going to fill with this love. I got confirmation of that the very next morning. Um, and lately, I've become addicted to loving the Lord. So if you remember the Old Testament, the Lord always said in the law, do not do this, do not do this. Mm -hmm. But in the New Testament, he gave just two commandments. Love the Lord your God, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, I'm not sure I'm ready to love my neighbor as myself, but <laughs> and, and until recently, I wasn't even ready to love the Lord my God because I saw the Lord too much like my earthly father who forgot me, loved me, abused me, just wasn't even there and so but what I've been doing is I've been making a, 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 a conscious decision now is the only time in all eternity that we'll be able to give him the sacrifice of praise to thank him for things that we don't see manifest in our lives because when we go to be with him in glory we'll have abundance we'll have help we'll have all these things and these things might be facts but they're not you know our you know, like with Roberto, I, when I got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, having type 2 diabetes may be a fact, but it's not true. Right. Right. The truth is that I'm healed. Right. So for me, I've become addicted to loving God. And I it started with consciously me saying, you know, that I love you, Heavenly Father. I love you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Holy Spirit. And just spending time with Him. And, you know, I, I've battled with insomnia for years. And so, like, even this morning, I spent two and a half, three hours just loving on the Lord. And that time wasn't wasted for once. Right. But, uh, you know, as, as I'm doing that more and more, one of the things that's, that's happening is that God's downloading things into my spirit. Mm -hmm. And what's really awesome is, you know, there are things for friends that aren't Christians mm -hmm. or, or people that, that have never gone to church right. in some respects. And it's been awesome because I've been able to, you know, through Facebook, even share with some of these people yeah. words for their kids or words about them and it, it's been awesome because I I was really I, I know I've got some additional words for some for one friend that I I'm praying about when to deliver him because her son was was died as a baby and I don't know if she's ever gotten over that 20 some years later mm. and so 
But I was able to tell her about her current son that she has now because the Lord during worship, you'll sometimes see me on my phone because during worship, the Lord will download things into my spirit. And I send myself emails so I don't forget to give a message to the person about something. But I just want to say, you know, I just want to encourage people, you know, because it's not just for me, it's for everybody. And I'm not, first of all, I'm not trying to point out me, period, because the number one command the Lord gives us is that we're supposed to love him with all. And, and, so, and that starts with a conscious decision of right where you're at, you know, just choosing to love the Father and, and choosing to believe that he's good even despite your circumstances. Right. Right. So that's what's happening to me right now. Thank you. Uh, see, be with Jason and Lee, Raikai and Roman, be with Jane, Anna Takira, be with uh, Tim and Lee and their family situation. Uh, just those people coming to my heart right now, just watching over them right now. Right now. So we pray for Jay last Sunday, and that was the last of her sickness. She yes. Instantaneous prayer sometimes. Right? Amen. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of Jane. Uh, Margie that came to visit lost two dear friends. One was one of her 22 year old um, uh, kids that was in her Sunday school class, and the church has forbidden her to come to the funeral, and she's just really heartbroken because they're just being really, you know, and this boy was precious to her heart. So. That somehow the Lord would comfort her through all of this and give her some sort of peace or reconciliation. I don't even know. I feel like calling her pastor and saying, hey, what's the deal? You know, this is just not a godly thing. This, she ministered to this kid for many years. But um, anyhow, she just needs peace in her heart. And she thinks you guys were reaching out to her. They're not going to be able to make it up here um, for the women's conference. But she loves hearing from Sarah and Suzanne. Appreciate you guys. Staying in touch with her. <laughs> um, one, one other thing. Um, so and I say this, Jamie, and I'll be out of town, so she won't be able to attend, unfortunately. But if any women here, if you're on the fence about coming to the Women's Conference, please come. I believe what God wants to do in this church, one of the things is going to start with the women that's already started. And he gave me two words a couple days ago, and I shared that with some of you. He said, Deborah, arise. And so... Come on. Uh, understand, Deborah was, was I, I think, the only judge of Israel that's mentioned in the Bible that was a female. And and understand what what you're called to be, because too often the church has made it all about the men in the church and what the men are called to do. But, you know, this move of God's going to take everyone, and the women, I believe, are critical in this church Amen. to helping us get in that path. So if you're a woman... Please come to the Women's Conference because yes. we need you to take your place as Deborah. Yes, and Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. It's no by accident that our young ladies have been being taught on the Deborahs and the jails and all the women in the Bible who stood strong. They've been taught this. I'd, I'd be elated if they were able to come to the conference too, but that's up between them and the Lord. And their grandma. And uh, we'll just let the Lord work on it. But they have been taught, so they can't say, I've never heard of these things. But the things that Peter just declared in this room, these young ladies have already been spoken to about. Amen. Amen. And uh, not that you would know Peter because you didn't attend the first women's conference because you were a lady, but we specifically talked to the Deborahs and commissioned the Deborahs and the Esther's to arise and come forth. So that's a confirmation for all of us that were there. Thank you for that. Yeah, um, I, I told last week about the dream I had that you know, I asked the Lord, He gave me a dream about the woman that was Jewish and had to do with it. Since then, I've had two more. Mm -hmm. And I swear, the enemy has tried to rob that thought from me every time I try to, to bring it up. But the one, the first one I had was. And I don't comprehend it. Maybe something else, Bill, but it, it was a unusual or never before manifestation of the Holy Ghost in a way that I did not expect. And 
I, I just remember that there were lots of tongues going on, and this manifestation of the Holy Spirit was like the end time manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And I don't remember reading anything that was like that. But that doesn't mean it won't happen because God, everything's not in there. That's right. 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 And uh, the last thing that I told Jane was that the raising of the dead. Yes. Now this is this I, I can't tell you how incredible because I've sought God, I've sought God, but what you know what I like to know what's coming. I don't like to be surprised. <laughs> well, what, what's coming? Yeah. No. Years. Just, just trust me. Hang on, hang on. So then I told you we were up by the river and it was not the state of Mississippi, it was the Mississippi River. My drink state or in Iowa, not Colorado. And I asked you later there one night, I said, Lord, give me, and I specifically asked for a dream. Give me a dream. I thought, well, angels haven't appeared, so maybe a dream will do it. And then I've had those three dreams. And I think, well, thank you, Jesus. I, you hit it on the head, though, when we, we have to meditate yes. on those things. Yes. Because yes. as we meditate on them, God begins to open them up. Yes. Yes. And that's why it's important for us to talk about those things here. Yes. Because He may use somebody who didn't have the dream right. that will begin to think about it, and God will open up something to them for all of us. Right. Now this wasn't just for me. Well, I, I really believe that the Lord shows us things. He showed me things for the church. Right. Yes. And I don't mean just this church. The church yes. is by right. right. yeah. right. And what the, the raising of the dead is going to be something that is yes. going to become. You're going to start hearing about. Them. Yes. You're going to start hearing about them. And you know, as far as I'm concerned, you might as well start here. Right. Uh, it doesn't have to stay here, but it could. It, it not only might as well, I believe it all will. Yes. We're, we're here for a reason. Yes. Yes. Now maybe the rest of you don't believe that he foreknew you and therefore he predestined you. I happen to believe that's true. Yes. And I believe everybody in here, he yes. foreknew and predestined. Yes. Therefore, we have a destiny yes. to complete, yes. to fulfill. Yes. And the enemy does everything yes. he can. Yes. To distract us, to yeah. put roadblocks in our way, he would he would do to us what he what the Lord said he wanted to do to Peter. Yeah. Trust me, he would do that to us in a minute. But Jesus is still praying for us. Yeah. Yes. yes, he's praying yes. for us. Yes, yes. 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 So, Don, as you were talking, there's two things that um, I need to share. One is that there will be three more dreams, and I don't know if they're for you or for members of the body, and then there's going to be three more dreams. There's going to be two more sets of three. So be praying for dreams. Um, and secondly, the meditation is the digestion, right? The word is the food. The dreams, his, his, the dreams are his word alive. Yeah. Those are his word alive in us. And the meditation is our digestion yeah. to get the nutrition and to get what we're supposed to out of it. Yes. And that's how, you know, we eat our food, we chew it. But then we have to go through the process of digesting it until we can use it. Yeah. It's the same thing with the word, with the dreams, with the interpretations. Right. So I believe everybody should be praying for dreams because there's going to be three more. Yeah. There's going to be three more. There's going to be nine dreams. And you've had the first three. And we'll see who has the next <laughs> two sets of three. Um, this is uh, really, I'm probably speaking to myself, but I have for weeks wanted to share something about forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together. Mm -hmm. And, but then I couldn't, it just never felt right, or I couldn't come up with the words. But when Don spoke, I, it all come back to me. It is essential mm -hmm. that we forsake not our assembling of ourselves together. 
Right. And the reason being, it has nothing to do with our salvation. It's not a heaven and hell issue. But for what we're just hearing, yes. I need yes. to hear what you have yes. to say. I need to hear what you have oh, to say. Yes. We all need yes. to hear the truth. Yes. We need to yes. hear yes. the yes. so that we can rise up and yes. what he has yes. Yes. to us to do. Yes. Um, and, you know, the devil is about distracting us. Yes. You know, I need more sleep and I need to do this. <laughs> And we got hours at work, and some things are beyond our control. But if absolutely possible, yes. we need to be here yes. for yes. such a time. Yes. 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 So, so I only get three of these today, right? Are you get three as the Lord has laid on your Okay. Head. So the Lord brought something else to me that I needed to share. Um, because somebody needs to know how God actually has a sense of humor here in, in these things. So there was a post on Facebook that said, if you have a stack of Bibles and a stack of $100 bills, which one would you pick up? And and I'm reading the comments, and of course all the people in the church, I'd pick up the stack of Bibles because I'd give those out. But then the Lord, so, but I put, yeah, I'd pick up the stack of hundreds. <laughs> and, um, and the Lord spoke to me, he's like, you know, people don't need another Bible. People need to see the Bible demonstrated. Yeah. And he told me, which I thought was pretty hilarious, Scott, he goes, I'd pick up the stack of hundreds too. He goes, I already know the Bible. I, I don't. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna blaspheme for the religious for a second. But the Bible is a book. Mm -hmm. The Word of God is alive. Yes. yes. And that book is not the living rain of Word of God. Those are words on a page. Right. Until the Holy Spirit brings them right. alive. Yes. Until somebody sees those words demonstrated, they are yeah, powerless exactly. in that book. Right. And, and what the Lord was telling me is to me. And what the Lord showed me through that is the church wants to give people the Bible. People aren't going to read the Bible. People that will see and hear the gospel demonstrated. Yes. 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 That is right. Someone else, uh, Jane. Um, Andy's family is having, uh, well, there's a lot of influenza going around, and a lot of people being sick. Yeah. And some of his family are, are, have been very ill. And then uh, Delaney needs a touch. She's gone through a lot of tests, and they finally have pinpointed the fact that she's something with the right kidney. So, okay. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay, so um, a lot of you may remember that uh, Eric and I teach classes in Joaquin. They're starting back up again um, on November 6th. They're every Monday night except Christmas, okay, uh, from 7 to 9. And um, I think the reason that I don't know, maybe this is the thing that we're supposed to do. I, I don't know. I feel like we have to do it. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's what's in front of us. And it all goes back to when God spoke to me a couple years ago and, um, you know, gave me. And, and I'm not a scripture person. I don't know scripture. I have not memorized the Bible. There's a lot I don't know because um, I'm still kind of a baby. But um, it was from 1 Corinthians about is your body not a temple? Yep. Is your body yep. not God's? Um, and so, um, ever since that kind of hit me, um, you know, I, I, in our business, we deal with lies every day. So we deal with death and we deal with life every day. And, yes. and people have choices between life and death. And really, what you feed your soul or even what you feed your temple can be life or death. And so it was really important to me that I spread this truth to anybody who wants it. Mm -hmm. yes. And so um, you may want to come. You may know people who want to come. So that's why I'm kind of mm -hmm. discussing this here. Awesome. But we teach the truth. Mm -hmm. We teach the truth about life and death and about food and how to heal yourself. And um, kidney problems totally can be taken care of. Diabetes totally yeah. being right. taken care of. It's that's not, that's not the truth. That's just what people yeah. are telling you. But I feel that if you have that information, if you have that truth, and it really, really resonates inside of you, that nothing can stop you from doing it, living it, acting it, and teaching it. So that's what we do. And if this is free. Anybody can come to it. We feed people real food. We teach them the truth. And then hope that that will get them through the week. <laughs> Um, until they, they come back the next week. So I invite anybody to come, awesome. yeah. even if it's just to eat and to talk to other people. Um, even if that's the only thing that brings you, I, I don't care. I, I just want to help as many people as I possibly can. Um, and 
tell them the truth. Yeah. So, thank you. All sparkly t-shirts we are going to be 24 karat gold sparkling in the lord <laughs> our theme god my beauty within um, so everybody who comes will get a t-shirt 
Um, I, do we? Um, we'll talk about the girls. I, the girls, everybody in the youth class. I think you guys are welcome to come. There's going to be some adult conversations. So I'll talk to Grandma so we can prepare. Um, but there will be some adult conversations uh, with the ministry coming, talking about sex trafficking and stuff. So, um, but um, we'll just. I'll, I'll, everyone's invited. Please come. It's going to be a wonderful time in the Lord. And the following. So, oh, that uh, situation with the. Uh, what is the name of the ministry? Uh, go, uh, Garden Gate Ranch. Garden Gate Ranch is, uh, we're still praying about their land that they're going to be purchasing. We're praying mm-hmm. God is going to be over here on the east side in mm-hmm. one of the uh, areas. Um, I believe this is going to be strategic, and this church is going to be a strategic part of the situation. I, ever since it was talked about, um, it's like I saw it. I saw it happening. So um, it's imperative, yes, for the adults to be uh, acknowledged of what this is, but yes, for the young ladies and the young men also to understand what this trafficking thing is all about, to learn the wiles and the ways of the enemy. But the best way to defeat the enemy is know his tricks. Okay? So uh, I believe this is going to be part of the thing. So, anyway. And then the following Sunday, we are going to have a soup dinner after church. Get at her. She looks. And uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the back uh, to bring a soup or a salad or a bread or rolls or dessert or something to share. So we hope you'll join us. Whether you bring food or not, please feel free to join us and stay for some fellowship after the service. Amen. All right. Uh, let's take an offering. Toby and Don, would you two gentlemen like to take an offering today? Lord, we're thankful to be here today, God. Give you glory and praise. Lord, let us fill ourselves out of this flesh, God. Come to you in spirit, God. We're in your realm. Everything is perfect, God. We need to bring it forth into this world, God. Everything we look at, we judge in a human standpoint. We're in you, there's perfection. Each and everything perfection. Perfection in relations. Perfection in finance. Perfection in health, God. Everything is perfect in you. We just want to release it here today in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we just ask that you bless this offering, God. Bless the gift and the giver. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. This is our shooting guys.
listen to that song. It talks about a voice is calling. Today we're looking at we're teaching on hearing God. He has a mandate for our youth. Yes, he does. But he also has a mandate for all of us in this room. The time is short. I'm not going to put the timeline on it because all the father knows that there they are. But even talking to Cassie, the lady who lives across the parking lot as they're moving to house, and I talked to her yesterday. She's been praying for that family for years, and yesterday she asked for another copy of the women's conference situation. It's in her heart, so we are preparing the way. This church is preparing the way. Let's not ever forget. This is a community church. Reaching out to this community, this city, this part of the state, and even this part of the country. Let us reach out. Declare the king of my heart.
praise to him, church. Oh, Lord. We release your praise to him, oh, church. Thank you, Jesus. Your presence is here as always. You never leave us for sins.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you have made us your righteousness. Praise God. And because you are good, we are good. Accepted in the beloved. Holy righteousness is our identity in you. And it's only because of you that we make these statements in agreement with your spirit, with who you are and what you're doing. We thank you, Father, that you're good beyond our comprehension, beyond our ability to understand the goodness, true goodness, the goodness of a God who loves us and gave himself for us. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, that we have been judged in Christ and found to be good. Hallelujah. Praise God. We give you all the praise. You alone are worthy. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. Thank you, worship team. Great job. What a blessing. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The Sunday school young ones can be dismissed. Praise the Lord. And uh, good morning, everybody, and good to see you here. Praise the Lord. I didn't get a chance to really shake hands with anybody. We were already into the service, and I didn't want to interrupt Suzanne, so I wasn't being distant or standoffish, just focused. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I heard, uh, I heard the statement made this morning. I was going over my notes early this morning, and, uh, and I believe it was Creflo Dollar. I'm going to try to give the credit where the credit is due, but, but it so uh, spoke to what I wanted to talk to you about. I'm not going to try to... I, I, I've got my thing, but I'm just saying what, what he said that really spoke to me. And that is uh, in Philippians chapter 3, Verse 13, and you don't have to bring it up if you're not ready there, Sheila, because it's really not my text. It's just uh, what I'd like to bring to your attention here for a moment. So in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, Paul says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Now, if you look at this... Uh, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Apprehended means to grasp or to understand. But this one thing, now in the original, this uh, is not there. I mean, that's a italicized word here, so we know that it wasn't in the original translation. And neither is do, I do. So what he actually says here is, brethren, I count not, I have, I haven't apprehended everything. But one thing, forget what's behind. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I don't know about anybody else, but that's what the devil likes to do is remind you yeah. of what's behind. Even if it was five minutes ago. Yeah. Your past is dead and buried in Christ. Amen. Thank you. It's, we live in the now forever now because of God. We are in Christ. Mm -hmm. He is the God of the right now. Right. Praise the Lord. So I found that to be really, in, this, yes. this I do. Yes. Praise the Lord. Forgetting those things which are behind. Praise God. And I say that because it, it resonated with me this morning because I had a text message from someone who I've known for, well, all, well nearly all my life. And uh, several text messages, in fact, that were quite, quite ugly and disturbing, praise the Lord, to say the least. None of you all would know him, so I'm not going to, you don't have to worry about trying to figure out who it is. <laughs> but uh, they brought up some stuff that, I mean, happened a long, long time ago. And the Lord spoke to me. I, I only text back a couple of times. Just uh, At first, I was very defensive. I didn't respond defensively, although I felt defensively uh, or defensive and uh, was irritated and so forth. But 
<coughs> I just text back that uh, I've already been judged. I mentioned this earlier. And I was judged in Christ and found innocent. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Not denying reality. I mean, life is what it is. But And then I got another hate speech thing. And uh, I just text back the last time I text back. I just said, well, it's by grace we're saved and not by works. Right. Amen. And uh, that's true for you, yeah. nope. I said, and it's true for me. Right. Thank God. Amen. That's the way it works. Praise the Lord. Yes. But I think that all of us deal with this kind of thing. Not, I mean, this is the first time it's happened to me for a long time, but, <coughs> but it has happened and it does happen because mm -hmm. there's a past. Amen. It's just not mine. Right. Amen. But have you ever had somebody question your, yep. you know, your salvation or mm -hmm. just be because of your past? Because, like, you know, you were too wicked. You did too much stuff that yeah. it's impossible that God could have, you know, done this for you. But they try to judge you, or the world does, and even and religion, I think maybe even more so than the world, a lot of times tries to judge you based on your old self, on whatever that was, you know. And we all got one, praise the Lord. And uh, that's really what I'd like to talk to you about this morning. So if you would, Sheila, I'd like to begin in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 through 23. Now, as much as that bothered me, because this is somebody that I, like I do know and had a relationship with over the years, but um, as kind of negative as it was, the Lord used it to show me just how good He is, to remind me of His graciousness, of His goodness, of His love. And how we truly are new creatures. Right. In the mind of God and to one another, that's the way it is. We, we are new creations. Yes. Old things have passed away. You know, they're just, they're there in somebody's memory, but not in our reality. Amen. And who we are in Christ. So he said, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. Their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. And where a remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Amen. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Verse 22, I want to draw your attention to one more time. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Praise the Lord. Now Romans 8 and verses 1 and 2. There is therefore now no condemnation to those or to them who are, which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for that reality and for that truth for every one of us. Praise the Lord. Yes. For 1,500 years, the law of Moses, this mosaic system of rules and, and regulations, governed the people of God. That was the whole deal. Praise the Lord. But Jesus introduced a different form of government, and it's called the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, it doesn't mean that you're lawless. It just means there's a new law that operates in your life. And we just read it. That law is called the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. That's the law that we go by. The law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. We begin to operate by faith in that law and not by fear. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 13, verses 18 and 19. Luke 13, verses 18 and 19.
Then said he unto them, What is the kingdom of God like? And whereunto shall I resemble it? It's like a grain of a mustard seed, which a man took and cast into his garden, and it grew and it waxed a great tree, and the fowls of the air lodged in the branches of it. So the concept of, uh, of the grain of mustard seed is something that can be used to define the kingdom of God, is what he, Jesus is telling us. So when it's sown, it becomes a great tree. Faith, as small as your faith might be, when you use it, by definition, it will grow. It will expand. It will, it will produce. Yes. Amen. And so that this great tree where all the fowls of the air can lodge in its branches. And by this, Jesus is introducing, introducing a new form of government. So people that are still trying to go back to the Mosaic law or the, the government of rules and fear right. are by definition, ex, you know, uh, causing themselves to be uh, rejected from the kingdom of God. Not, be, not by God, but by our own way of operating, by our way, own way of functioning. You can't operate in two systems at the same time and, and, and be effective in either one of them. Praise the Lord. And so Jesus introduced this new form of government, but he also tells us that when you contaminate this mustard seed of faith, you contaminate the kingdom government. And you do that by mixing law and grace, by mixing the, uh, the rules and the regulations with the goodness of God or with the grace of God. You can, and when you do that, you cause people's hearts to fail them, the scripture says. In these last days, heart, men's hearts will fail them for fear yes. of things to come. What, if, you, if you have confidence in the goodness of God and the grace of God, you're not going to be afraid of what's coming. You may want to know what's coming like anybody would, but you don't be, have to be afraid of it. You can look forward to whatever it is, God, however God's going to manifest. Amen. Because we're not under this old covenant of fear and, and uh, rule keeping, but we're under a government of the righteousness of God and the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is what dominates us. Amen. In this last day. Praise the Lord. So. When you contaminate this mustard seed of faith, you contaminate the whole system. Amen? And people's hearts fail them, and you cause their eyes to become blind. The law will blind you to the love of God. It will blind you to your potential. It will blind you to your destiny. Praise the Lord. The law, the scripture says, shuts up faith. Binds it, locks it up, ties it up so it can't function. Amen. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 13. Now, maybe some, maybe no individual has ever, you know, confronted you this way. But I can promise you that if they haven't, you have. To yourself. Your own conscience, your own mind will try to dredge stuff up. You know, try to remind, oh, if you're so, yeah, you're righteous, yeah. yeah. What, what, what about, you know. We need to be like a major league pitcher or a really good quarterback. As soon as you screw up, you forget it. <laughs> Amen. Or it'll affect everything you do after that. Sorry for the football analogies, but it is October in Iowa. Praise the Lord. Clones win. Oh, what a game. Praise the Lord. I felt the Holy Ghost. I, I got to tell you, I felt the Holy Ghost in them. The Hawkeyes, not so much, but they did win, praise the yeah. Lord. It was just a little bit more of a struggle for me. I, was, yeah. I had to put more into that game. <laughs> they, they don't win unless I'm really on board 100%. Yeah. You know. <laughs> anyway, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, and neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Right. Praise the Lord. Right. Amen. So, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 23. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Praise the Lord. So life in the kingdom is a, is a life that's governed, amen, by the Holy Spirit, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Remember? Praise the Lord. So when John the Baptist introduced Jesus, 
He said, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, changing your mind to get you to change your ideas about how this government functions, how, how life is supposed to be lived. Amen. He said, I do indeed baptize you that way, but there is one that comes after me that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost, with the Spirit of God. Amen. Now, under the Old Covenant, in the Old Covenant, you were governed by rules. In the New Covenant, you are governed by the Spirit. So we heard people talking about today, whether it's a dream, whether it's a, a, a word from the Lord, whether it's a, this unction, this sense of God's doing something and God's urging me to, to, to do this or to, to do the other thing. Uh, that's the spirit led life. And that's the way we're supposed to be led. That's the way we're supposed to live under the kingdom of God. Amen. So uh, under the old covenant, it was rules on rocks. Praise the Lord. But under the new covenant, it's God's spirit writing those laws in our heart and in our minds. Yes. He just gives us the principles. We understand by those principles, this is how God's going to operate. God's going to work this way. And if, I, if I'll just cooperate with it, I'll get to, I'll get to experience it. Praise the Lord. I'll, I'll get the benefit of what God's doing. Amen. So look at John chapter 17 and verse 3. John 17 and 3. And this is life eternal. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So we've received this life. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And we received it as a free gift. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't come just to give us a, you know, a, a escape from hell. Uh, or a ticket to get to heaven. Praise the Lord. He came that we might have life. And that we might have it more abundantly. That we would experience God life, spirit life, in this world, in this natural world. Praise the Lord. That was his intent. That is his intent. And that's where we have to get this, this paradigm shift, this paradigm shift, this, this way of thinking, amen, to a spiritual level in order to reap the benefits, in order to experience the spirit life in the way that God wants it to, to be experienced. For the dead to be raised, somebody's got to be operating in the spirit. It's not going to happen by information. It's going to have to happen by people actually believing that this is what the will of God is. And that by doing that, we then transform our way of living from a natural way to a spiritual way. And I, most of all, you know this. You, you don't do anything without thinking. You can't. It's impossible. Some things we do really fast because we have the synapses are just going. I mean, it's like a reaction. But there's still a thought that has to take place in order for you to do anything. If those thoughts are not in Christ, if they're not, if you're not functioning mentally by the Spirit, in other words, if, you're, if the Spirit isn't what's directing your thinking, then you're going to be subject to just whatever the world can make possible. Or whatever your human flesh, amen, can make come to pass. So he came that we'd have this eternal life, amen. God life, abundant life, and, uh, you know, eternal life is something that we have right now. Not something that we're trying to work forward to or trying to become, uh, you know, acceptable enough to have it. This is a life of freedom. Amen. It's a life of freedom from t the tyranny of a blinding, amen, rule-based system of sin and death that blinds you, that puts a veil over you so that you cannot see the goodness of God and the purpose of God for your life. Praise the Lord. It's a life of freedom. Hallelujah. Amen. Freedom from the covenant of death and condemnation. Yes. Kingdom of God isn't about a law that you have to keep. Praise the Lord. Amen. The kingdom of God is something that he does for us. It's something that he does in our life. Praise the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yes. You know, I, I think that sometimes uh, we get this idea that it's even though it's a spiritual thing, we still try to dumb it down to something natural. Something, you know, that's, that we can understand, that we can comprehend with a, just a natural mind. A consciousness of some kind that is just, uh, you know, out of a, a better acting person. Amen. But this is about receiving a life that will keep you. 
not about you keeping rules and regulations, but it's about receiving the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And that will keep you. Yes. That will that will direct your life. That will keep you in the way of God. Amen. It will be a light to your path. It will right. it will give you direction and, and, and give you understanding in ways that you wouldn't normally understand. A lot of times he directs our path and we don't even know that he's directing. We just arrive at a destination and go, wow, that was the Lord. Right. Praise the Lord. So you have received the spirit, not through the works of the flesh, but through hearing of faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. And as a citizen of the kingdom of God, you've got a legal right to all of the resources of heaven. Yes. Mm. Amen. That's raising the dead. That's casting out demons. That's healing the sick. That's, that's prospering. That's, yes. you know, restoring relationships. All of that is part, amen, of the resources of heaven that belong to you yes. as, a, as a citizen of heaven. Praise the Lord. Yes. Galatians chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. Here's kind of the way we, we, uh, we live our life. You've all heard these things, but uh, Limbo Champion walks into a bar and is disqualified. <laughs> come on, come, it'll, it'll come to you, praise the Lord. But you see what I'm saying? We, we, that's how we do. I mean, we, we are defeated before we ever get started. Because we've identified ourselves as one thing. And because we've identified ourselves as that one thing, then we've disqualified ourselves by the very thing that we've identified with. Yes, that is true. Praise the Lord. And that's not the way God operates. He's created us new creatures. Yes. The old things have passed away. We've got a whole new way of looking at life and a whole new way of living that life. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, but if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Exactly. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Now, just leave that there for a second. The first that we read, the works of the flesh, that's us. That's, that's flesh. That's humanity. That's people. That's just life. Amen? This is what happens when we were born again. When we are living by the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, this is what... This is the... This is the uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, what comes out of God. The other is what comes out of humanity. Right. This is what comes out of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. So the spirit-filled life is going to produce the fruit of the spirit. Exactly. It just will. You see, the contrast here is one's called the works of the flesh, and the other is called the fruit of the spirit. The works of the flesh is something we do. Yeah. The fruit of the Spirit is something we just bear. Yeah. We don't do it. It just, it just happens. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Because we're operating by the Spirit or trying to stay in tune with the Spirit. Yeah. It's the result, the natural result, amen, of the Spirit. Amen. Now, the works of the, of the flesh are man's attempts to be holy. Yes. And, of course, we know by having just read them that it doesn't work real well. Mm -hmm. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit is God living His life in us. And through us. Yes. See, we can, as I said before, we can get to the place where we're trying to work the fruit of the Spirit. Yep. Then you're not any better off than you were if you're still in the flesh because that's what you're actually doing. You're trying to produce something that you don't have the capacity to produce. Right. Only the Spirit can do that. Right. So you have to rest in God. You have to be aware of the, of the reality of God in you so that these things can manifest. So that the fruit can be seen. So it can be born. Amen? So... Praise the Lord. The fruit of the Spirit isn't something we manufacture. We can't manufacture fruit. Praise the Lord. Fruit is the result of being connected to the right root. Yes. Amen. He is the vine, we're the branches. And if we abide in Him, we will bring forth much fruit. Yes. Doesn't say we'll manufacture it, doesn't say we'll make it, it just says we'll bring forth fruit. Fruit will come out of us. Praise the Lord. If we stay connected. Now, we've got fruit trees. We've got cherry trees, apple trees. And uh, I've, I've discovered over the years that uh, they don't produce fruits by yelling at them. No. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's a religious way of trying to produce fruit. It doesn't work. Because no matter how much you yell, they don't do anything. You can yell at fruit trees. 
but it won't produce fruit. You can water it, you can prune it, but you cannot force it to produce. The power of the fruit is in the seed. Praise the Lord. And we have the seed of God in us. We've been born again. And no matter how much we yell at each other, no matter how much we yell at ourselves, we're not going to produce fruit. We produce fruit when we become aware of our connection to that seed. Connecting us to the vine. Amen. 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 Jesus was speaking of himself and he said, unless a seed fall to the ground and die, it can't bring forth fruit. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But if it does, it will produce after its own kind. And that's where we are. Amen. In Christ. Praise the Lord. So look at John chapter 9 verses 1 through 4. Praise the Lord. I'm excited today. Tomorrow I'll have one eye. Right now I don't have either eye. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know I've got one witness in here and I won't say another thing about it. But praise the Lord. Somebody blazed the trail ahead of me. Hallelujah. But seven years ago today, I swallowed my gum and broke a mirror. So as you might imagine, today's a pretty special day for me. Praise the Lord. Seven years. Hallelujah. <laughs> yep. This is the year of Jubilee for me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Anyway, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Now, I see a, uh, you know, I see a parallel here or a you know, to what I'm talking about. I know you might, it's a bit of a stretch maybe, but I still see it there and I believe it's there for a purpose, praise the Lord. So instead of working harder, just embrace what the Spirit is doing in us. Instead of focusing on whose fault and why and so on, so let's focus on it's the Spirit-filled life. Amen. The Spirit-governed life. Praise the Lord. Not making New Year's resolutions, not you know, turning over a new leaf or trying harder to be a better person. Right. You are dead. Yes. And your life is hid in Christ. Yes. You keep trying to dig up a dead person. Every time we do this, we're dragging around, a, you know, a corpse. Yeah. As far as God's concerned and as far as the, the kingdom of God is concerned, we're messing with dead bodies instead of yeah. the life of Christ in us. Amen. Right. That is a grave tending life that is being preached in most religious circles. In fact, in all religious circles, it's a it's it's like being a, a you know, a caretaker in this funeral home or a cemetery or something. That's not what we're, we're, we're about life and that more abundantly, yes. not about death. Yes. Praise the Lord. We are dead to that old person. Praise the Lord. Amen. So stop focusing on you and start focusing on God. That's where your life is. Didn't he say that? Yes. This is eternal life that you know him and the son whom he sent. Yes. Not, not how well I know me. That's not life. That's death. That, that is dead. Yes. Praise the Lord. So I'm, we're, we're, we're talking about the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life and then he'll do the same thing for you that he did for Jesus. Yes. Praise the Lord. Bring you alive to himself. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. That is exactly what Peter's talking about. Yes. The more we focus on God, yes. the more he makes us alive yes. to God and the more God becomes alive to us. Yes. Praise the Lord. John chapter 9 and verse 5. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We were in darkness, but now we are in the light. Amen. He is the eye opener. Yes. Amen. The law blinds us. Jesus opened our eyes to God, yes. to the goodness of God, yes. to the love of God, yes. 
to the reality of God. Yes. And, the, and religion blinds you yes. to those truths yes. and makes it all about you. Yeah. A dead man walking yeah. or a dead woman walking. Amen. Yeah. So leave the ups and downs of victory and defeat behind. Yeah. Quit focusing on that. Yeah. Right? One day God's going to say, Nathan, it was a real hoot living in you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I had a good time living in your body. Amen. That's the way we should think about it. If he didn't feel that way, he wouldn't have done it. He wouldn't have set this thing up this way. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then the Spirit will confirm who we really are. Father and Son. And now this is not gender specific anymore. You know, we know in the kingdom, in, the, in heaven, there's neither male or female. You know, just like, it's just like, okay, maybe for you ladies, it's difficult to be called a son. Well, I've had some problem relating to a bride being me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's just because God's not talking to us in those terms. Exactly. Amen. It's, all, it's not gender specific. He's just saying you're all... Children, you're all my children. You're all equal in my eyes. You all, as a son, under the old, you know, uh, under traditional ways of thinking, the son, always, the oldest son, always gets the inheritance. So we're all sons, and in God's eyes, we are joint heirs with Jesus. So in the mind of God, we are all the same. We are all equal heirs. We are all firstborn sons to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, out of that reality, out of that understanding of who we are, Father, Son, we live the abundant life. We live the life of an inheritor. Yes. Praise the Lord of the firstborn. Amen. All right, now remember, the, we are blinded by the law. Okay? All right, John chapter 9, if you will, 6 and 7, verses 6 and 7. John 9, verses 6 and 7, immediately... After the scriptures we just read. So Jesus speaks to this guy and he says, the guy that he said, that wasn't your problem. It wasn't your problem. You didn't bring it. You didn't, you didn't cause it. Let's not focus on the past and who's at fault. Let's move, let's move forward here. And he says, when he had thus spoken, he spit on the ground and he made clay of the spittle and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And then he said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is also inter uh, by interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed, washed, and came clear, seen. Praise the Lord. So Jesus spits on the ground, mixes his saliva with the dirt, and he makes clay. He anoints the eyes of the blind guy with this clay, and then he tells him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is, by interpretation, scent. And here's some, some powerful symbolism. Mixing the clay of Adam's dust, out of the dust of the ground, God creates a man, our progenitor, you know, our progenitor, the, the original, amen? And so he mixes this clay of Adam's dust with the saliva containing the divine DNA of the Son of God. There's a reason for this because it's everything I'm talking about here. Human and divine are just about to come together. Yeah. Just like it did when God created man originally. He brings together the red clay of the earth and he breathes into it the divine life of God. And he causes the first man to be human and divine. Yes. One with God. Yes. Which gave this man access to both the visible and the invisible. Yes. The realm of heaven and the realm of earth. Yes. The natural and the spiritual. God is connecting the interface of human and divine in us. It's a new creation. 
It isn't just divine, and it isn't just human, but it's human and divine. The best of both worlds. This is good stuff here. And we get to enjoy it. We're not supposed to obsess about it. We're supposed to just enjoy it. And it gives us the best of the next world. God himself. Or the other realm would be a better way of putting it. Heaven and earth, human and divine, visible and invisible come together in the person of a man. Ephesians 1.10. And again, man is just mankind. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, now it's not talking about the end of the world. It's talking about the end of that age. At the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. That's exciting to me. Yes. That gives me a whole different way of looking yes. at my life, yes. of who I am and, and, and who God is and how we interface, how we interact, how we yes. connect. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. Amen. When human merges with divine, the spirit of the living God comes into us and immediately we have access to both realms. Yes, we do. The problem has been religion blinds us to one of those realms, and so we never get past this realm. We never, even with the experience that we have, we're still stuck with this, just this natural carnal thing. Always hoping, always looking to the future for something of the divine or something of the supernatural or something of the invisible when it's right already here. It's, it's ours. It's part of us. It's who we are. Amen. And just because you're a new creature doesn't mean you don't have feelings. And this is where we get messed up. Yeah. We are new creations, but we're, we are God and man. We are divine and human. Yes. Praise the Lord. You can, yes. you know, I mean, that's what Jesus was the prototype. That's what he's showing us. This is who we are now. Yep. Yep. Praise the Lord. And just because you're a new creature doesn't mean you don't have feelings. Right. You still have emotions. Yep. Amen. You still have desires. Yeah. You still bleed when people cut you. Still hurt when people say evil against you. Just because Jesus didn't respond doesn't mean he didn't feel it. Doesn't mean that he didn't didn't sense, you know, the the hatred and the and the variance and all these things that were coming against him. He did because he was a human. It's just now you have chosen not to live out of that carnal nature. That's what Jesus did and did it perfectly. He knew he was a human. But he said, I don't say what I say. I only say what I hear my father say. I only only live out of this divine nature of God even though I'm human. And I can experience and enjoy a lot of human realities here. I don't let that rule me. I don't let that control me. Praise the Lord. You choose to live out of your divine nature, of which the scripture says you are a partaker. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. Mm-hmm. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world yeah. through lust. How do we escape it? By choosing the divine nature over the natural. The the God DNA over the human reality in terms of the natural realm. Amen. You are simply reconnecting yourself to the tree of life. To use the Adam analogy again here. Amen. You're just making a choice. We have discovered that living from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is just exhausting and condemning and depressing and separates you from what God's wanting to do in your life. Praise the Lord. It blinds you to God. So we reconnect to the divine life. In other words, dependence on the one who lives in us, who lives this life through us. That, that's the picture of the Garden of Eden. Yes. That's what's really being told there. Yes. Why? So that we can understand that when Jesus comes, we can be reestablished in that reality, in that identity. Human with God DNA. Yes. Both worlds. Yes. And all we have to do is the same thing Adam did. 
But based on his bad choice, we have some information and revelation that will help us make a better choice, yes. which is to choose the spirit yes. rather than the flesh. We get to still enjoy the benefits of being a human without having to suffer the consequences of being a human if we will stay focused on the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that's in us. Amen? Our true identity. Hallelujah. This is God. Jesus sends this blind guy to the pool called Siloam, a place of washing where you can be sent away, the scripture says, seeing he was sent away healed. He was sent away free. He was no longer bound by some future event. He was a new creature that could see. Free. Praise the Lord. All right, Matthew 3, verse 16 and 17. In the simplicity of this, I'll just take all the religion out of it here. For the sake of my illustration here, but this is uh, Matthew 3, verse 16 and 17. Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God, not a dove, a Spirit of God that looked like a dove, that was in the form of a dove, and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. What is he telling us? He's saying, God and man become one, right here. Yes. Yeah. The Spirit of God and the flesh of a human being yeah. yes. unite. Yes. DNA from God and the human become one individual. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus comes out of the water. The heaven opens. The Spirit of God descends on Him like a dove. This is my beloved Son whom I am well pleased. Yes. It's the affirmation of God saying, we're one now. This is my Son. This is my offspring. Yes. Out of me He came. Yes. Praise the Lord. And I'm well pleased. In other words, I'm happy to be living in this guy. Yeah. It's a hoot, praise the Lord, to get into this guy and be living my life through him. Yes. That's what he wants us to experience. That's how he wants us to feel about this because that's how he feels about it. Yes. We think, oh my God, he had to come down here and live in America. No, he wanted to. Yeah. He wants to. Yes. He wants to experience our life just as we want to experience his life. Yes. He wants to experience it on his level. Yes. Right. Praise the Lord. It's the affirmation of God. And the dove lands on Jesus. God's DNA yeah. is being imparted. Amen. Yes. Well, now we've got a new high priest, yeah. a better covenant, an olive branch, peace with God. Yeah. One with God. All of that's in this three verses. Uh -huh. Two or three. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 to 22. And we look at that and we go, wow, yeah. wouldn't that be great? It is. It is. It's just a picture of us. Amen. Amen. He's the prototype. We all come out the same way. We all are created this way. Yes. But it's a spiritual thing. You can't get into the natural without losing the truth. He's the truth, the light, and the way. So this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I'll put my laws into their hearts and their minds. I will write them. My DNA is going into them. They're going to know mm -hmm. how I think and how I feel because I'm going to be in them. Yes. And their sins and iniquities I won't remember anymore because that's passed away. That's in the flesh. Yes. Now where remission of these is, there's no more offering for sin. There's no more need. Yes. For forgiveness and for, for sin offerings. Amen. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. What is that? That's the presence of God or that's the reality of God that we were separated from. That the flesh of Jesus made available to us so that we could be again one with God. Yes. Amen. By a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Coming up out of the water and God saying, now we're one again. We're, we're one all over again. Where we were in the beginning, we are now again. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Affirmed by God. Yes. Accepted, he said, in the beloved. Yes. 
He has made us kings and priests. Christ in us, the hope of glory. God's DNA in us. The hope of a revelation of God wherever we are. If we operate by the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Okay, Hebrews 10 and verse 23. Because all this has happened, see? And then he says, So let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Yes. Profess who you are in Christ, not who you've seen in the mirror, or not who somebody else says you were 40 years ago, or 50 years ago, or last week, or five minutes before you got here. Yes. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 8, we'll wrap up here. Romans 8, 1 through 5. See, we're something special. And you say, well, that sounds egotistical and arrogant. No. If, how, how many believe God's special? Yes. He's pretty special, right? Yes. Then how can you not be yeah. if you're His offspring, if you have His DNA? Exactly. You're just an extension of that. Yes. Yes. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Right. Not talking about who don't, who, who just do really good stuff and, and not bad stuff. He's talking about the way we function, the way we choose to see ourselves. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we've got flesh and we feel it and we, we, we suffer with it, but that's not our identity. No. We have to operate from the Spirit. Yes. Amen. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Made us free from the law of sin and death. So the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made us free from the law of sin and death. Yes. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Yes. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Not in our spirit. Not in our born again man. In the flesh. Right. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Who make that choice. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit mind the things of the Spirit. Yes. Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, man. See, I don't go around saying, I've been bad, I need a spanking. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Except occasionally with Sally, just for yeah. the fun of it. No, I'm, I'm saying I'm sorry. I just made a bad choice there. But yeah. let's move forward. No, what I'm saying is, when we talk about minding, we think of our kids and say, "You, you better mind." What are we saying? What does mind mean? It means to think on the right thing. Get your mind focus on the right thing, yeah. and what will be the result? Good things come. Yes. Right. I want to mind the Lord. Yes. Not because I'm afraid of punishment. Right. But because if I keep my mind focused right. on Him, I know that only good can come to me. Right. Yes. If my mind is on the Lord, I'll see myself as God sees me. Yes. Yes. If I mind the things that are of the flesh, anybody can come along and just bum me out. They can ruin my day and my life by just saying a bunch of negative junk that may or may not be true of the old creature or of the flesh. Right. But they are not relevant to who I am in Christ. So I need to mind the things of the Spirit. I need to think, amen, in terms of who I am in Christ. And when I do that, I can change my reality. I can change the world that I function in. I can change the people that are around me. Amen. I can open their eyes to the living God. I can help them to see that there is a new creature inside of them waiting to be birthed, amen, by the DNA of God, by the goodness of God, so that they can then have an impact. We can raise the dead right now. But I'm not talking about just the spiritual reality here of people being born again. I'm saying there is a reality that exists that if we mind the things of the Spirit, there is an opportunity for us at some point to raise the physically dead, amen, and bring them to life, amen, that they might know a Spirit known as Jesus or our God, hallelujah, our Creator. That's our purpose. And unless we get this mindset, we'll never be able to affect the other one. Praise the Lord. I said Wednesday night, we are consumers of the kingdom. That's true. 
But we consume the kingdom for a reason, so that we can export it. Yes. Not so that we can indulge, amen, or, or overindulge ourselves, but so that we get the benefit of the consumption of the kingdom, and then yes. we are able to export that to other people. Yes. That's where raising the dead comes from. That's where healing the sick comes from. Yes. That's where casting out the devils come from. Jesus, yes. If you believe it, give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Amen, amen. God bless all of you being here today. Let's keep the mind of Christ. Let's try to stay focused on who we really are. And when the thoughts come of that old creature, that dead person, man, he stinks. Just, just put him off. Hallelujah. We're not resurrecting that dead guy. Praise the Lord. Sir. Sorry, but I keep getting this... Vision, picture, whatever in my head. So, I mean, I really don't know much about this, so I, I have no idea. Praise God. Praise the Lord. It's the Lord. There it is. So, in, in Asia, perhaps, when expensive, beautiful vases were broken, they didn't just sweep them up and throw them in the trash. They lovingly and carefully put them back together. And the way that they mended them back together was with pure gold. Mm -hmm. So, they were worth more broken. Yes. Than they were before they were broken. Yes, we have this treasure. Yes. Hallelujah. In an earthen or broken vessel. Right. And God does restore. That's a good That's good awesome. analogy. Praise That's the Lord. Awesome. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Even though we look like the original vase, <laughs> there's pure gold. There's God's yes. DNA flowing yes. through us that Jesus. makes us far more valuable. Because of God Himself, yes, that's, that's the greater kind of one is, is in us. We don't, we don't. I'm not saying we're God. I'm saying we're Christ like and yeah. we should be acting like yeah. it. Yeah. We should yeah. be stepping out in that, yeah. and that is not that is not being high yes. and mighty on yourself. That yeah. is doing what God put yes. in you to do. So go be that. Yes, yes. that's be right. That. That's right. Yes. That. And don't be afraid. I mean, I know we're we we're, we're thinking blasphemy because. I'm saying I'm God. But in a sense, we are. Don and Jane, let's just use them as an example because I happen to know their offspring. I know their kids. Their kids are them. Yes. Now, they may not look perfectly exactly like them. They may not operate exactly like them. But anybody that knows them knows they come from them. Yes. That's their reality, is they are Wyckoff. Yeah. Yes. They're not Don. You know, you can say, I, they, Andy can't say I'm Don. Right. But he can say I'm Don's son. Yes. From, you know, Mary can't say uh, I'm Jane. Right. But Jane is my mother. Yes. I came from Jane. Yes. yes. Amen. So I can't separate myself from that reality because that same blood yes. is flowing through me that flows through her. The same DNA because 100 years from now, 500 if the world still tarries on, somebody can go back to Amazon.com or someplace and look up their DNA and they'll say, yes. follow it all the way back there. There, there, there it is right there. Yes. We know where they came from. People are still doing it. The people are doing it today. Yes. Want to know where we come from? Want to know who our ancestors are? Yeah. I got I, I can take you all the way back. A guy called Adam. Yep. And a woman called Eve. Yep. Yeah. That's. You, that, but it even goes further than that, because before they were, your DNA already existed, and that's why God says, it, "Before, before I created the earth, you already existed in Christ. Your DNA was already established. Your reality, your truth of who you are, was already established. It was just a matter of you getting born into it." Yes. Oh, hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Give the Lord one more hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's go out here in the power of our true identity in Christ and let's make a difference, amen, in this world. Let's, let's affect some dead people. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let's bring some life yeah. into this yes, yes. dead place. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate you this morning. Have a great week. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Uh, <laughs> 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 Straight to the